Well, all right, all right, all right, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Planet Genix podcast. I'm Sean. That over there is Brian, and back again is our good buddy Joel. What's hey, up, everybody? Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, man, glad to have you back. Glad to have you both back. And here we are again, and uh, in the midst of the the acolyte turmoil, I guess we should say uh, it's not getting any better. Um. Yeah, I just hear nothing good uh, coming from anybody. But before we get into everything, guys, please remember to hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. Leave us a comment. Help us out any way you can. It's free to subscribe. And always remember that it helps us out tremendously. So please, thank you so much for doing that. But Amen. yes, here we are. I, you know, I wondered how long we would go with this Acolyte thing, but it just continues to keep... So building and building, giving, right? <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, like this episode just really just had nothing, no substance to it at all. Uh, I know we were talking earlier, and and Joel desperately wants something positive to say about any of this, and I keep telling him, dude, stop worrying about saying anything positive. Just say what you have to say because. I don't know that there is much positive to say about it that we didn't try and say in the very you know beginning uh, with the first two episodes because you know I I thought I could find joy in it and then you know it just it just went down a path and here we are but I mean for me it's just lackluster writing man like I, honestly like a a middle school creative writing class could have churned out probably better content and you know i i was pondering whether or not this is just the state of television now like are we just flooded with a bunch of you know uh what's the word i'm looking for just people who just don't cut the mustard i guess man you know just don't measure up to what we're used to as good writers and you know, uh, or whatever, good directors, yeah. good producers, all that stuff, you know. Uh, but then you turn around and you have you have shows like Fallout and House of the Dragon and, you know, um, Andor was a good Star Wars show. Mm -hmm. uh, Ahsoka wasn't terrible. It wasn't Andor level, but it wasn't yeah. terrible. It wasn't certainly wasn't Acolyte bad. Right. So, you know, um, you have stuff like Bad Batch, which you know, it's not live action, so I don't really consider stuff like that, but it, it's a well-written show. People liked it a lot. You know, the stuff is still out there and, and able to be had. So, you know, I don't know why it is that it seems that it just seems, and it's not just them, but it just seems that Disney is the main culprit because everything coming out of there seems to have this problem, but they're not the only ones. We had the same kind of issue with the uh, Paramount crew on Discovery. You know, not quite as severe, but same type of issues. Um, I think we're here now with the boys. You got similar kind of stuff going on with that show. You know, if you're just talking about political, whatever, yeah. you know. I don't think that's necessarily bad writing, but it is political. Right, yeah. It's uh, definitely bringing real life politics into the, into the writing. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. The, uh, television's been bringing, you know, uh, modern issues into what they've written for years and decades you know we're used to that kind of thing but it's been cleverly put in especially with star, uh, star trek you know they cleverly disguise it by making it an alien something or whatever but it's you know clearly talking about native americans or something like that you know but it's an alien in this show what about the ot and the vietnam war right yeah i mean ever jews yeah i mean like everything with the vietnam war but just constant uh in the 80s for sure, right. like late seventies, eighties, all the time. Uh, but it, it didn't matter. Like it, it was still it something. Was a, that, it wasn't so overt, right? Yeah, no. It, it was. Yeah, it was just. It was subtle. It was. It was put in there. It made you think, you know. But you didn't feel like you were beaten over the head with a message. And now that just seems like everything that's coming out. Uh, and again, I'll say it specifically Disney. It seems like that. Um, but there's others that are guilty of it. But, you know, I, I, what, how does it end, I guess, is the question we ask ourselves. Is this just going to be a continual bitch session from now until eternity about, uh, you know, every new show that comes out? Or 
uh, are the executives of these companies, these studios, going to finally step up and say, you know what, you're actually hurting our bottom line. And for these public companies, they have no other duty than to make money for their shareholders. Well, so we already know what Bob Iger said, right? Well, there's what he says and what he does, you know, and, you know, it's all about optics with yeah. them. So he says one thing. He talks out both sides of his mouth all the time. I can trust <laughs> nothing that comes out of his mouth. I mean, you, you should, if you ever, if you've ever seen one of the shareholder meetings and you've ever heard of the shareholder meeting, my God, the, the man knows how to schmooze it over. Yeah. I mean, he really does. Yeah. However, you know, Bob is, you can say what you want to about him. He, he is a smart guy. He, he is an educated guy. Um, and I, I, Sean and I have had this discussion, but he does rob from Peter to pay Paul. And some, oh, yeah. something you're seeing right now is like if his park is losing money, uh, he'll, he'll fund something else. Or if we're seeing this activism type of TV show, you, if you look in the theater right now, um, the uh, oh my god, the, the new Pixar movie, Inside Out. Oh my whatever. god, the new, yeah, the new Pix Inside Out, too. Yeah, the new Doing Pixar really movie. damn good. It, yeah. It's great, and you know what? They left the politics out, but now that's known for Pixar. So, try not sometimes you'll look at Disney movies and you'll go, uh, this is 3D animated, this is 3D animated. They both look like each other, one's Pixar, one's not. Pixar. You'll right. see Disney itself won't be listed on, I mean, sorry, Pixar itself won't be listed on the Disney title. And right. then you'll see Pixar, which seems like a private entity at Disney, right? And it will it will facilitate money. You know, it, it will make money. And then, of course, Peter to pay Paul. So if you're wondering where, where his skill level is, is he's greenlighting. Yes, he's <laughs> Maybe greenlighting. Maybe John Lasseter too, man. I don't know what kind of, you know, where his clout is still to this day. Um, right. If he's still the, the main dude in charge. But that could be the reason for that. Right. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, theoretically, Kathleen Kennedy could do the same thing. It's not going to happen. And she's right. the reason for a lot of this. <laughs> but, like, say she got replaced, it could theoretically be fixed. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I, I do believe uh, Feige, although he, he's had a lot of wrong, uh, you know, a lot of miss, yeah. uh, a lot of swing and a miss. He he will have a hit this year with uh, Deadpool. The the, the pre-sales on Deadpool yeah. uh, have been, now that's Deadpool and Wolverine. The pre-sales right. on Deadpool and Wolverine are out to ceiling. It's rated R. It's, it's I mean, a rated R coming from Disney. It, it's going to be fine, and it will make money. And we're getting everything that we've been, or everything that I've been asking for anyway, but yeah, I mean, a it's, lot of stuff we've been asking for in these movies. Fans, I mean, the the physical movie is a fan service movie because people exactly. wanted to see Wolverine and Deadpool yeah. together, and they've been teasing it for I don't know what ten years now. I mean, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's been a minute. So they, are they just make it money. Sure. That, sure yeah, they will. it proves that it could be done. Yeah, like I mean, there to this minute can still be done, right? Um, even in the midst of all this, because this will be the first thing coming from Disney. You know, not including that Pixar movie that, right. that'll do very well, right. hands down. But, you know, so saying all that, man, you know, we could talk about the episode. There's not a lot to talk about the episode. It really, as I said at the beginning of this podcast, the, it, it furthered nothing. Um, mm. it, left you, it left you asking, you know, well, if you're following it like we are with what we think we got happening with the Rosh Hashanah stuff or whatever it's called. Right. Um, Rashomon. Rashomon, Rashomon, yeah, that's it. Uh, you know, then it does ask, ha, leave you asking more questions, but you know, yeah, it's just like, why? You know, I mean, why? How I could have wrote better than this. I'm a terrible writer, <laughs> and that, that's that's why I get, I guess, so irate with it. It's like, man, I really could have done a better job than this. So, Joel, yeah. like, you always have good stuff for us, so. Yeah, what have you got? I know you don't yeah. have a lot. It's um, I mean, it's so it's so bad for me. Um, and I, I'll go through some of the bad. And it's not really that it's bad, bad, like negative on the show or negative. It, this is you'll see. You'll see where I'm going. Let me give you the 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 start and you'll get it from the beginning. Um, it was the skinny man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's the Acolyte episode four. It's called Day. That's the name of the episode. The air date was Tuesday, June 18th, 2024. It has a physical 32-minute uh, runtime, physical. 
uh, it's got, and I kid you not, I had to put this in because I'm searching for something to tell you. It's got a one minute, 25 second open sequence. Okay. It's got a three minute, 45 second closing credit. That is a five minute and 10 second total, which gave, gives you the actual runtime of this episode, 27 minutes, 30 seconds. That wow. is sad. Yeah. That, is, that is really sad. All right, the description. <laughs> Racing to the next target, the Jedi head to a new world as they close in on a on the clever assassin. IMDB. At least I got a whole sentence this time. All right. And and, and that's that's our intro. And I like I said, I don't have much in the way of good to tell you. So most of the stuff is going to be bad, but I have a couple of points we, we can talk about. Hey, before uh, you jump into but before it, before I do that, you yeah, right let in. me ask you something, man. Did you find it. out? Was that Plo Koon? I no, it isn't. It isn't Plo Koon. Well, it's not identified as Plo Koon at this time. I mean, I mean we it's don't just know. such a quick, so. you know, like I said, it's just a shot, and there's this yeah. dude that has a very Plo Koon fucking mask going on. And I'm like, whoa, hey, yeah. wait a minute. You know, they already, which I'm sure you'll touch on, they already snuck Kiati Mundi in there, you right. know, yeah. and, and we had to bring it up, but everybody and their brother is talking about it. So we're not going to bring you any big news there that you'll hear from us. I mean, well, you know, they, actually, they rewrote I, history for Kiati Mundi, and I know that Joel had a lot of stuff about the Wikipedia thing. Yeah. I don't know if you're going to bring that up or not. Well, I will when we get there. But the, yeah. again, it's part of the bad. It, it's not that it's just. I mean, this episode's not great. It really isn't. It's very, very short, as I just told you. Um, the the main talking point that is worth, you know, talking about to me in a positive way is Basil. Basil yeah. is our, Basil is our tracker. Yeah, yeah. he he is a, uh, a and I say, <clears throat> tight. Tainan or Tanan, but it's spelled T-Y-N-N-A-N. So you emphasize the second N in the tainan. middle. So you can say tin, Tanan or tainan. tainan. Yeah, either way. Tainan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Basil is a cross between an otter and a beaver. That's what he is. Uh, right. uh, this species was first mentioned in Brian Daly's, uh, Brian Daly's 1979 Star Wars novel, Han Solo's Revenge. So he's an original series Star Wars character. This is why he's worth mentioning. He's not just some figment of somebody's imagination getting right. come up. You know, this is why I'm mentioning it. Yeah. So he, he's featured in 1970. And then we know this about the whip. When we get to the whip, I, I got plenty. We can talk about it again. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Basil was portrayed by a gentleman named Hassan Taj. Hassan operated R2-D2 in the 2019 film uh, Star Wars Episode Nine: Rise of Skywalker, along with the droid builder Lee Towersy. He also played JV-P12 in the 2018 film Solo, A Star Wars Story. So let me, let me show you uh, if I can bring it up, because we, we've had some fun here today. Here's yeah, we have. Uh, here is as in a roller coaster right here is taj so this is taj hassan taj isn't it kind of weird how he looks a little like a little kenny bit. baker kenny baker yeah, <laughs> yeah. that is Which weird bro I've, I've actually spent time the wife and i have spent time with kenny baker and his wife i know you have yeah. uh, have, have his autograph and he is a wonderful person i'm sure i'm sure taj is a wonderful person and uh um you know, I, I'm not wishing any bad things on him. I, I thought he did a great job. Uh, but uh, I, th this way, this is kind of, you know, classic Star Wars. There's a lot of behind the mask, that, that yeah. information that, that people may may never know or may not know. And nobody's talking about, you know, Hassan. So, Hassan, you know, congratulations. Yeah, I, man, I think you're cool. doing a good job. Yeah. Thumbs up from us. And, I just uh, think that's weird as hell how much he right. looks like Kenny Baker. <laughs> it's just right. odd. Right. Wow. So that's a son. Now, um, I, I don't have <laughs> that. I, I kid you not that that is the, the length of my positivity. And, and I thought it was pretty good positivity, you know. <laughs> well, I, you I, notice I, he had the uh, the uh, the little uniform on that Asha said she didn't want to wear when they left with a civilian right. robes. Yeah. And right. they both had to wear them. So I thought it was like, I don't know if you call them robes. It was more like, you know, like a not a space suit but yeah like a like a buck rogers dashing suit or something <laughs> right. yeah that, i call it I, and it's really appropriate in my brain my brain says space fatigues it's space like fatigues, fatigues right. there you yeah. go fatigues yeah. from the, the army you know so that's space right. fatigues. that's what it looked like to me that's that's a good a good way to say it yep no doubt <laughs> 
but I, I don't, I don't have, you don't I, got I'm, any more visual man, sports. You know, I, I love when you show us pictures. I, and I stuff. would love to give you some good visuals. Do, with some do we good want to get the last way. of the good out? Cause I've got, just, is there just not a trailer for this episode? I want to throw out about it. No, uh, no, no. I mean, no. well at, at, what did I say? 27 minutes, 30 seconds. It's okay. Most of the stuff we saw in this episode, it, honest to God, folks is, is from a trailer. I mean, it really is. The, most of this episode you'll, you can find in a trailer. You really can't. You did, you could have pieced together this episode from the trailer. Yeah, which is and kind of what we did on our meeting. last podcast, piecing right. stuff together. Yeah. yeah. This, this this episode is, is literally wasteful in so it, many It ways. is, and we can tell you what happened right there. They're pushing stuff back to five because five is yeah. the crux. There's going to be a change there, right? Right. Well, it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. Something significant. We're not getting the full story because we know get the, we get the full story in episode seven, supposedly. But it's going to be like a turn, a twist, right? This is one of those crossover right. episodes I told you that comes up all the time that that, that fails a lot. And yeah, we talk about on Discovery. Episode. Yeah, it's filler. It's just trying to link you to the next thing. Yeah. Right. And there's clever ways to do that, and this isn't it. This isn't it. Yeah. Right. I actually did have a picture of, uh, just so, I mean, in case you don't see the episode, this yeah. is the character that Hassan was, uh, uh, this is Basil. This Basil. is uh, what Hassan was doing. Yeah, he was so. kind of cute. But he was always gone. Yeah, old Yord was not happy about it, was he? Uh, no, <laughs> and, and, and I don't know if if Rashomon is effect is still in play, but uh, yeah, we're missing scenes with Basil. And right. and if you if you didn't notice it, I mean, he he's in one place at one point, he's completely right. in another place at another, and then he's screaming, and I'm like, oh, okay, where did those yeah. scenes go? But it, it's disconnected. So I, there probably is some cutting room floor stuff we're not seeing. I don't but know. Will we? But will we? Maybe cutting room for me. No. I still believe that the Rashomon fat. Yeah, the Rashomon thing. I, I, I think a big thing thing is that in this episode we get a little bit of Virgil from the usual suspects out of yeah. uh, Kamir, yeah. right? We do, uh, and uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's a false flag that he's supposed to be the master. That's the thing when you start playing with false flags, you don't know where they end, right? Uh, so w- the thing is, there is more to all of this that went on that we didn't see that we'll see later if yeah. you want to. Right. If people yeah. even care. I yeah. only care about who that master is. Right. That's yeah. literally all I want to see at, at the end of this is like who that is and whether or not I'll be satisfied that that was the appropriate person to make it. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, you know, I'm still wondering about Darth Plague is still wondering about Tenebris. What else, Joel? <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> I, I, like I said, I, I looked for an Easter egg of note. I usually pick out one or two or if something yes. is worthy of the fandom to hold we on do to. Love the Easter hey, eggs. We, you know, like we saw this happened or, uh, you know, R2-D2's floating in space when the Boba Fett's slave one. Let me use that word, Disney, because I know you've changed it over the years. Right. The slave one, you know, peels away from the back of the ship. That That is an Easter egg of note that r2d2 is floating in space there you know i mean there's there's pieces of the garbage in the trash well what can i say here we are and i I call this one this doesn't exist by the way guys so yeah i I, i'm had to make make this up to make it worth worthy of talking about and maybe you'll get a kick out of it maybe you want won't but uh for the for the young the young fandom that that is respecting the lore and coming from uh, a point of view of, hey, my dad, let, you know, got me the first six movies and I got to sit down and watch. them. This is for you. So th- this is this is sort of a classic. And I am part of that fandom and uh, I'm, I'm an older guy. I mean, here we are. The young people to know that it's not always this bad, you know. So here, here we go. Uh, this is called the retconned egg. I couldn't think of a better name. <laughs> because why not retcon the damn egg? Okay, why not? All retcon right. Easter eggs. Yeah, like you don't see this one coming. <clears throat> All right. So Jedi Master Ki-Adi Mundi is in the show. 
Believe me when I say he was not born until 92 BBY. That's basically a point in time battle of Yavin. You can look up BBY and go through that if you want. But this series, as we have pointed out in the first episode or the pre-episode, I can't remember which one we did. I went over the numbers and the dates and here they are making points and matter. And I'm like, really? You know, the series, this series, the Acolyte is set in 132 BBY. That is 40 years yep. before the birthday of Kiati Mundi. I don't care what you say. I can back all that up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have complete proof of, of that. Or at um, least that was true until a few days ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah Wookie Putty. Wookie Putty. Wookie Putty. Wookie Putty. Yeah. Yeah, they might as well change their name to that because, I mean, boy, were they just going all over and changing everything, rewriting all right. of history, you know, right. to make Disney – uh, look good, I guess. I mean, make them right. Yeah, make them right. And uh, Joel had all kinds of screenshots. Oh, man, are you going to show those? I, I will. I'll show a couple. Um, but uh, let me let me get through the. I didn't. That was the first sentence. Let me get through right. the second. <laughs> I mean, this is the only point that we're going to bring up. Loaded tonight. sentence, man. Oh yeah, yeah, it was loaded. We got plenty to talk about. Um, Kiati Mundi was portrayed in the prequel trilogy by Silas Carson. He, yes. uh, Silas also played voiceover in, artist. He is. He is a magnificent. Speaking of my new Been microphone here, you know, he, I've got a voiceover microphone. Yes. So if I, you guys enjoy my voice today, if I sound better, <laughs> then I, I'm happy for it. You know, this I, I did this so that it, it would be better for everybody. Uh, he also played Newt Gunray, and this is Silas yep. Carson. He also played Newt Gunray. He played Lot Dodd, and uh, also played Antidar Williams. He was in the Doctor Who uh, section. Second Doctor Who of the New Who, where right. they are in uh, outside the Earth before it blows up on yeah. that space station, Sat Five. He plays the uh, voices of the the hooded figures that Dude. sound just like New Gunray. Yes, they do. Uh, his resume is so impressive. Silas's resume is so impressive. Let me uh, let me bring up Silas here. This is uh, Silas Carson. Let me pull him up. Uh, this is Silas Carson. He is alive and kicking. He's still he's still around. Uh, he's based out of the UK. Uh, Did they he, use him in this episode? Now you're going to jump in ahead, but that's fine. Uh, okay. This is the this is the retconned egg. So, um, uh, yeah, Lucas, and it just brings a tear to my eye. And and it's nothing against what they did. I, I'm I'm fine with what they did, but we know. And we pay attention and nobody's covering this. So I, I want to Silas, I appreciate your work. Silas, you yeah, have an too. amazing career. Uh, and we know if you take a look at Silas Carson on IMDb, his some of his recent voice acting includes stuff like Diablo four in, in a character in that, which is amazing. But he's a voice actor and he doesn't yeah. get a lot of recognition. So he counts to me similar to Basil. He counts to me as one of those behind the mask kind of guys, although yeah. Although he ple he he originally played uh, Kiati Mundi, so here we go. Um, Lucas, as in George Lucas, did not give Carson any backstory from which to build his performance as Mundi, but simply left it up to the actor to create his own backstory back then. Once the shooting of each film was completed, Carson did not know right away whether he would be returning for the next film. According to Star Wars insider writer Scott Chernoff, Lucas, producer Rick McCallum back then, and yeah. casting, casting director Robin Gerland were so impressed with Carson's four performances in The Phantom Menace that they decided to expand upon Mundy's role in the second film. Much of Silas's work is voice acting, as I've just talked about. Uh, he does actually have some movie roles. He is extremely popular in in the movies and TV shows he he is in. Uh, I mean, he's in he's all over the place. So take a look at his IMDb. There's there's a ton. There's more than like fifty. I mean, he goes from Doctor Who to uh, the Jason Statham movie uh, with the train. What was the thing called? Where was the thief in the car? And I I don't know. I have to go look it up again. But it's a lot. Italian <laughs> job? Uh, no, the no, not the Italian job. The uh, uh, God, I, I'd have to, it's all right. 
No, I'll, I'll look it up yeah, later. Was, but, but basically, I mean, if you, you'll spot it when you go through it. And you really should look at everything he's been in. He's probably been in something you've seen. I mean, I probably. And the reason I didn't write it down, because it's like literally 40 or 50 titles that I've seen him in. And right. he's still a working actor today. Similar to, to Walton, yeah, Walton Goggins. What now? Uh, to be fair, that's pretty common for a lot of voice actors. But his titles that he's worked on are the impressive part. Yes, and they're incredible. He's done some incredible work. Like I say, he's based out of UK. Um, I, I do believe a lot of this, a lot of the acolyte was shot in the UK. So why did I tell you? Why did I tell you about Silas? All right, and look, there's nothing against Derek. Derek Arnold uh, is you'll find in the credit here. And so let let me let me pull up Silas. This is Silas back uh, back in the day. So this is what Silas looks like. And Derek Arnold, Derek Arnold, let me pull this one up. Oh, uh, right there. Yeah, this is Derek Arnold. So you can you can tell it's not, yeah, the, totally it's not the same actor. And you can see Master Kiati Mundi, Derek Arnold. Now, Derek, um, uh, uh, he is been, he like I said, no, nothing against the young and an Arnold. <laughs> right, right. He is portrayed by um, uh, Derek in. I think just I think this might be Derek's first time portraying him i I think i'm not positive but it's hard to tell with with wikipedia and wiki and they don't really talk about these behind this behind the mask characters they should uh the fandom is really proud of the behind the mask character these are the people you meet at the cons and you don't have to and you don't have to pay 100 150 dollars for their autographs like our buddy john anderson yeah yeah so you don't have to do this uh, we know people that you know don't charge this kind of money you know for for being that guy at the con and he may not get uh, a big following and there might not be a lot of people at this table but he was there he was on the set he can tell you things if you ask him questions most of these people are pretty cordial and they're worth recognition and i mean we wouldn't know who kenny baker is or anthony daniels you wouldn't care because they were behind a mask you wouldn't know peter mayhew you wouldn't know uh david prouse you wouldn't have an idea you know how sean brings up information about these past characters there's a reason there's a purpose and we're it's part of the fandom it's part of the richness that you get so n- no offense to Derek before I get this out. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't have an offense to it. It's just that you got to understand Silas Carson. This was shot during COVID. Uh, Acolyte was shot during COVID. Silas is working. They, he's in the area. What a heck of an Easter egg it would have been to bring Silas back mm-hmm. to do this little bit role. Yeah. Let him let him do it one more time. You know, it would have been great. And somebody yeah, like no me, with somebody like me could have had a little tear going, you know, and, and or like Sean and say, hey, man, they brought Peter Mayhew back. He could he could barely walk or said, no, God bless. He passed away. But you get my idea. If they brought yeah. him back to do one last thing, this kind of coup de gras. Let him let him have it. Um, well, I'm going to bring this picture back up. When I saw this, which one? I was like. The oh, one yeah. you just had up there. Uh, I was like, one dude, prior. is that even Kiati Mundi? I, I wasn't even sure because he doesn't I, even look yeah, like him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this, it's is, like, this is the one you know, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's uh, and this is the one we got. Yeah, it looks totally right. different. Like I was right. like, I think that's Kiati, but I'm not sure. Right. And then later on, I thought I saw Plo Koon, so I didn't know what the hell was going on. <laughs> it's there. okay. It's ridiculous. All right, you know, get, they 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 wanted you. Yoda. It should have been Yoda. I mean, right, honestly, right, but right. Yoda's been completely cut off. They will not allow Yoda. Uh, or it could have been Plo Koon. That, that sh- probably should have been the one it should have been. Let me let me let me get you through Derek. There we go. This is Derek. And you can kind of tell. Let me uh, I can switch these up. Yeah, no, that's Derek. Yeah, so you, you can tell like the, each other. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Derek and yeah. Well, you can tell that that's Derek. You know, you can look at the face and go, "Mm, oh, yeah, okay." Silas has a rich history with him and all the back things he's done for sci-fi fantasy. And he has a lot going for him. Derek, on the other hand, he's kind of just in the start of his career. He's only done Star Wars stuff for Disney Star Wars. So here we go. Derek is an English puppeteer and an actor who worked as a creature and droid performer in star wars episode seven the force awakens he also Is he from hansen uh i'm not sure he also portrayed lanaver villacham the lugga beast along with tom wilton and vober dand in the force awakens and pow 
and the Borg Gullet in the 2016 anthology film Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. Arnold returned to the screen to play young Kiati Mundi in the fourth episode of The Acolyte. Acolyte. And both of these bits, the one from uh, the one from Silas and the one from uh, uh, Derek, are they're both IMDb credit is where I wanted to go with that. However, uh, as you know, my God, uh, the the <laughs> the controversy is so bad. And, and I have to bring this up. So this is an original uh, bit here. And this is the age of a Syrian. I was going to say Syrian, and it may be Syrian, but that's what that's what uh, Kiati Mundi is. So if you take a look at this, this is the the age defining graphic here, and they don't they don't age that much. Um, this leads me to believe, and this makes my brain waste this episode like a fire in space when I see <clears throat> the disrespect to such a classic, uh, you know, behind the mask actor. This makes my brain immediately say, OK, we're now in the past and we are in a parallel universe in the past and we're having a problem and for me to be able to continue to watch this all the way through my brain starts making things up. Like how could this be possible? Uh, is it possible that he is um, somehow longer, longer living than the other Syrians? Sur- I'm just going to go with that. So uh, is it possible that he can live longer? Is well, force vitality or something. Yeah. Maybe he's got some non aging abilities that we don't know about yet. That it's not talked about. And then, of course, I've heard it brought up, but uh, it could be something as simple as they just wanted to put somebody in because they told them no to Yoda. And which I can prove that too. Uh, the uh, the writer for this episode, Claire Keechel, and I, and I I think I said that right. Uh, Claire um, really started doing some really bad things on uh, on Twitter and answering questions. I guess in an innocent way, but the way she answered them. Uh, it was bad. It, it wasn't good. They, they, she just let loose. And this was in the middle of the night. I was doing research at the time and Twitter was launching. I mean, it's like two. I got a I got a picture of it. It's like two or two thirty in the morning or something like that. And um, like Sean said, I I, I am like uh, like many, many of you. When I was doing the research for this character, obviously I had Wikipedia open. I obviously did. And Kiati Mundi, you know, I had I had the pages open and well, not pages. It was just like one long strip. And at, as I'm doing it, I had multiple copies. I had like three windows of the same information so I could keep his stats at the top. And then I would scroll down through the middle. And on the third copy, I was looking for something we, I, we could talk about that was positive. Right. And in the middle, in the middle of the night and in, in doing all this, one of them. Change. had a had a cash failure and i was like what is going on i hit refresh and when i did this this happened so uh i took a picture i was like unbelievable and i don't know that you can read this and, and blowing it up is going to be hard but this yeah. is what the wikipedia used to say so it's got a home world it's born 93 bby and he died 19 bby well in 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 less than like 30 minutes this happened and he, uh i was like really so we put this one up and then here it is. And they've taken away his birth. They even changed so, the picture. Right. Yeah. They changed the picture, took away his birth. And I was like, come on, guys, what are you doing? And I, I, I have I literally have a folder because I was worried that I was going to have, I mean, a, maybe a power failure or a blip or something was going on with Wikipedia. I didn't know the controversy was going to be happening at, at the time. So on my cached page i tried to hit save i tried to save the source and save the html and make a backup copy on my drive i couldn't do it it was crashing to the code i had the third page open so two of my pages have crashed so on the third page that i had open i said screw it and i, I pulled out uh what is it windows shift s on your, and i just kept hitting windows shift s and scrolling down and i've basically got 25 or 26 pictures of the complete history of Kiati Mundi on my drive. And I was like, okay, well, this will work. And sure enough, the, by the next morning, uh, you know, all hell broke loose. Uh, there was a big problem with uh, different streamers and it became a thing. So, yeah, I mean, here I was working on a retconned Easter egg idea, you know, and then I was there 
at I think it was two thirty or three o'clock in the morning Central Standard Time, which is uh, and I was like, holy, you know, what are they doing? Uh, this is really shameful for for Wikipedia to do this for professionalism purposes. And if they wanted to change history like this, in my personal opinion, you should have just had an addendum at the yeah. bottom. Because an watch addendum. this, watch this turn out to be because there was a lot of good information, and I've got it, and I don't really care that you've changed it at this point because I've got it. But somebody <laughs> ten years from now looking it up, they won't know that this was an addendum, right? to the story and that prior to the acolyte, which no one refers to anymore, no one likes and everyone retcons from Star Wars because that's what I'm feeling. And so is everybody else. We just want to remove this thing from existence at this point. It's caused nothing but hate and and the PR disasters that are are hateful. And like I said, I'm struggling to find something positive to say. So as Sean said, shame on you last time, Wikipedia, you uh, you, you should be ashamed of what you've done. You should have yeah. just had it an addendum at the bottom and told, you know, this is a revision for the acolyte. Uh, to- uh, show and it is saying you know blah 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 his age is this or his age is that and you should stick with that and you should not play with with history of the fandom because if you do if you make the fandom mad there there will be there will be no wikipedia left you'll certainly be removed and somebody else will open the site that's more accurate than yours and that will happen if you continue down this path you need to, as a political source for a fandom you really do need to attempt to stay neutral and stay out of it. And you don't need to have any kind of bad actors that sway you one side or the other. You need to stay professional. And, and that's my personal opinion. That's it guys. That's my whole bit. I, I don't have anything else uh, outside of the amazing mass amount of negativity. Uh, but uh, I thought you guys might enjoy a trip down memory lane with yeah. a, a retconned egg of Kiati Moody, which no one is talking about, which yeah. is, you know, part of the research. But that's cool. as pos- positive as I can keep it, guys. Works for me, man. Uh, I don't know that there's a point in giving this this episode stars. Uh, I, I want to add in just a couple of things real quick before we get to that. They gave me something in this episode. It was specifically for me and nobody else. Uh, if you're getting bored with the episode, episode, you could start doing this drinking game that I'm doing. Uh, every time there is an archway in the background of a scene, if somebody crosses it, take a drink. You'll get drunk pretty quick. Uh, they gave me one shot out of about five or six uh, where Jackie and uh, Osha were talking, where the, there was nobody walking across the corridor. That was for me. Thank you. Whatever. Uh, um, so far as positivity, I did appreciate the nods to... Uh, Dagobah and Endor uh, that I saw in some of the shots that we had on Keldor, but also that they gave us the rest of it, right? It wasn't just these nods. Um, unfortunately, that's all only positive I have to say about it. <laughs> yeah, I saw nothing good out of it. So, yeah. I mean, like, I'll kick off with the stars. Um, half a star? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to get zero from me again. I yeah, mean, zero. The only reason I, I gave zero. the last episode one star is because of the Rashomon effect and, right. and film school. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. This 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 series is seriously lowering my IQ, and what? I'm having a lot of problem with, with a lot of this stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to find good stuff. Oh, there was one amazing thing that everybody missed and nobody talked about. Which one? That shot that was good in the volume where they used the mist and fog to create to correct the uh, the issues that they have with those shots, right? It's one the the fallout. What do what you know? Are you talking about? You're talking about the. They had a shot. Uh, it's like a, a panning shot, right, where they were looking over a, a, a cliff face. Yes, and they they put some fog down to cover up a, a, an area there. And I'm not sure if that is volume uh, mistake or, but you were you had called it before, and I agree. I mean, some look, man, th- there's there's like one or two shots. At my, well, I know I'm not even going to give it that. There's one shot that I enjoy. I think Sean likes it too. In like the first episode, and people talk about it. It's the one where the seats go up and the, yeah, I love that. Yeah, the yeah. warp, we you all know, love that. Okay. what not warp, freaking light speed comes but out. It is. It's like it's getting ready to go in warp. Cinematically, it's a great shot. You it guys is. did good. 
However, that's not worth a point. You know, that right uh, that's one shot out of your yeah. whole episode that we enjoyed. That's it. That was your <laughs> mechanic, you know, mechanist, you know, light speed us, whatever you want to call it, you know, and it, it's great. But uh, you got to have that all the way through. You've got to have some care going into it. So I agree with you. Yeah, that's probably a volume shot. It's probably a peel over, but it's not great. I mean, it's it's OK, but it, I don't know that I'm going to mention it as the, my favorite shot of the episode. Hell, no, it I, could I, be, I, though. I bring it up because I, I feel like it is a volume shot. I feel like there was a flaw in the way that it looked and they used some, some additional assets to cover that up and it worked great. Yeah, I agree. I mean, they did they did cover it up well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To me, though, it's lipstick on a pig. Well, <laughs> so, yeah, well, I mean, it, you want to call it, you know, lipstick yeah. on a pig. That's it. And uh, yeah, so excuse in the volume. Uh, I'll give it a half star. I would give it one just for, for what they gave me. But it was just so flat, so short, so nothing. Half star. Right. Yeah. Worthless. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't think there's any, anything more to say about this. It, it was a stretch, you know, to say anything about it anyway. There just was yeah. nothing there. So. We uh, thank you guys so much for joining us, man. We uh, we look forward to seeing you here in the future. We'll have some more. Uh, I'm sure we'll be talking about the Acolyte till it's absolutely over. But uh, right. yeah, hopefully some House of the Dragon stuff coming up soon. So uh, yeah, that's going to be that. And you guys remember, as always, be excellent to each other. And Brian, Joel, and I will see you on the flip side. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one, everybody. Yep. Time for your retcon, people. <laughs>